I wish more shows more did what Ruby Volume 1 did in portraying systematic racism. We're off to a wonderful start. I must have said that I am specifically talking about Volume 1 in isolation in this first half. With that done, let's continue. I watch a lot of anime. And by extension, I watch a lot of isekai. And a lot of those isekai have animal people. Is there a generally accepted name for them? I know it's not for us. Anyway, a lot of these non-human species in said anime are usually the victims of systematic racism. Now my assumption is that it just feels good to see someone beat the shit out of or just humiliate people who wronged them for such dumb reasons. I know that's what I find appealing in it. And I won't lie. The idea is sound. Humans in the real world discriminate based on the shade of your skin color. Having actual body parts from actual animals would not help. With that in mind, I do think Ruby did something quite unique among shows like these, especially in portraying a society entrenched in systematic racism. And that's having a racist protagonist. And if you think that you can't make characters racist and likable, the point isn't to make a racist character likable. It's to present a likable character whose flaw is racism and show the audience that character evolving past it. For those who haven't rewatched the series recently, a refresher. After a character we would come to know as best boys stowed away on a ship and ran past our main characters, we got to hear a not insignificant tirade by the W in the show's title. I simply don't care for the criminally insane, the guided. They want to wipe humanity off the face of the planet. Those faunas only know how to lie, cheat, and steal. Stop calling him a rapscallion. Stop calling him a degenerate. He's a person. Would you like me to stop referring to the trash can as a trash can? Or this lamppost as a lamppost? Give him time. He'll probably join up with those other faunas in the white thing. Wow, we're escalating from stowaway to terrorist who wants to wipe humanity out is... something. Why is Grow Up presenting Faunus as a whole? Because the most prominent pro-Faunus organization was responsible for the deaths of many people she knew and the source of frustration for her father, who didn't need any more negative feelings to bring into his home. He could do that all by himself. You want to know why I despise the White Fang? Why I don't particularly trust the Faunus? They've been at war with my family for years. Grandfather's company has had a target painted across its back for as long as I can remember. I've watched family friends disappear, board members executed, an entire train car full of dust stolen. Perfect. And every day, my father would come home furious. And that made for a very difficult childhood. As a result of this, Weiss internalized the negative view of the entirety of Fauna's kind, which leads to an argument with her teammate, Blake, whom she's a scene away from learning that not only is she a Faunus, but she was a member of the very same organization they had been arguing about. Well, maybe we were just tired of being pushed around. Now, I do have words to say about this, but let's put them in a box for now and address why I like this. The thing about portraying a society as having systematic racism that I find most writers slip up at is not the systematic part, but the societal part. While if, even in most instances the racism can be felt in the world, it's often not felt by the interactions the characters have with any character of importance. I mentioned earlier that it feels good to have a discriminated person shove the beliefs of the people who discriminated against them back in their face. The problem is for the most part, these are usually antagonists or minor irrelevant characters meant to personify all the racism so they can be shown up and thrown away. Most writers shy away from having anyone who are meant to perceive as good guys take part in that racism. And I get it, racism isn't a trait usually found in good people. But in a society truly plagued by societal systematic racism, 
even the good people will not be able to avoid being influenced by this thinking, which should have been ingrained in them from birth. The worst example of this I can think of is in The Rising of the Shield Hero. Yes, I am bringing a second massive fandom into this. For how much I enjoy Shield Hero, it really falls into this trap. Raftalia, the non-human companion of the hero, is a raccoon girl which is also predictably discriminated against. But the thing is, no one really bats an eye at her with the exception of unimportant NPCs and pieces of shit shambling around pretending to be human beings. Every relatively good person is generally accepting of her immediately. The princess of the kingdom where it's okay to hold her people as slaves, raised by one of the, the aforementioned pieces of shit, doesn't even have so much as a bad look to give her. There's even a scene where people fawn over her without much negative connotation, unless you want to go into her physical age of 10. And the show quite literally personifies its racism in a fat asshole who is responsible for all the pain she's felt. And yes, it did feel good. But when every good aligned character has nothing negative to say about her, it makes the actual racism feel less like something that's part of the world as a whole and more like something that's just there to make the inevitable beat down the antagonist receive all the more satisfying. By contrast, having a ca title character who is absolutely meant to be a good guy start off with these traits and unapologetically show them in public despite being an heiress to a massive corporation and thus should be a master of hiding her less publicly appealing traits, it does show a lot. But that's not all. I think an understated part of this is the silence of Weiss and Blake's teammates. I think Ruby and Yang's decision to at no point try to challenge Weiss on her views says a lot about the complacency society reached as a whole. The only ones trying to check Weiss is Blake, while the other two sit around because they've read the script and know they have nothing important to do for the rest of the volume. And going into the other volumes, this is compounded by the fact that no one seems concerned about the actual racial issues the foreigners face. They are really only punching bags. Before Volume 4, the only people who really addressed it were Blake and Torchwick, and Torchwick was manipulating in, in a bunch of new recruits. But if you're truly ready to fight for what you believe in... However, this leads to two criticisms I have for Ruby on this, the show, that is. While it's obvious what the show is trying to go for with Wise, they made two missteps in doing so. The first I alluded to earlier, the white fang as punching bags. I know I criticized Shield Hero for how their racism was personified by only a few assholes, but at least they showed it substantially. Ruby doesn't really do this for the white fang, so it kind of comes off like Weiss was right to see them as anarchists. If the most racist thing we see happen to the Faunus is a guy who bullies everyone pulling on a furnace's ears. I told you it was real. <laughs> what a freak. And the Schnee Dust Company, which got less racist over time, until the thing that got them to talk about how Weiss's family has screwed over the furnace was a disaster that even Weiss's dad was upset about. I remember this disaster. I remember how furious it made my father. I wish I could take back the years of pain my family has caused the Faunus. Ilya's backstory talking about the aforementioned disaster with her classmates laughing at this does mitigate the problems. But one, humans probably died in the accident too. We offer Faunus the exact same wages given to the rest of our mining staff. To the rest of our mining staff. And B, those are some off-screen bitches. And a drunk who falls under disposable characters as well as the contender for the worst military leader in the show. Both of them who only appeared in the last two volumes of Seven. After the White Fang's plotline had mostly been wrapped up. Shield Hero, by contrast, had a straight up massacre and very widely accepted slavery. Unless you're the Shield Hero. 
in which case fuck you the second misstep is the resolution of the act as you'd expect from a show with a racist protagonist you have to teach the protagonist to not be such an ass i will now play chopped off parts of that aspect of weiss's act weiss i want you to know that i'm no longer associated with the white fang back when i was with stop i don't care you said you're not one of them anymore right no i i haven't been since i was younger all I want to know is that the next time something this big comes up, you'll come to your teammates and not some... someone else. Of course. Yeah, Team Ruby is back together! Yes, really. And this isn't just the end of it in Volume 1, it's the last instance where it's mentioned. After this, Weiss doesn't have any issues with Fornos at all. She has no issue that her teammates were part of the group she earlier expressed she believed wanted to wipe out all of humanity and not only does she not ask for an explanation she stops one as it's being given and brushes everything off that's not an appropriate conclusion for a second i wondered if we were actually supposed to interpret her actions as racism and not just disliking one organization why i don't particularly trust the faunus but Blick's dialogue, where she calls wise things like discriminatory, is never addressed as being wrong. Ugh, you ignorant little rat! You are a judgmental little girl. That Probably go. The terrorist group? Where are we so going? Based on his species makes you just as much of a scoundrel as you believe him to be. It's because of people like Cardin, people like you, that forced the White Fang to take such drastic measures. You're discriminatory! I guess in the end, Ruby was also afraid to have a racist protagonist. Now I'm not saying I want every story that deals with prejudice to have a main character who overcomes that prejudice. This video is just me acknowledging something in the show that I think we should take note of and I kind of wish more things did, be they shows, books, or manga. All writers have to balance the negative and positive traits they are willing to give their characters as they make them interesting and relatable. But I think there are points where writers go out of their way to avoid some negative traits at the cost of interesting storytelling. Don't forget to hit the like button, comment your thoughts and subscribe as well as hit the bell so you never miss a new video. Also check out this video on what's wrong with Ruby's world building or the dialogues playlist to see my take on various Ruby scenes. Thank you and good day.